Okay, welcome to Word Processing. This is Standard One. We're going to review some basic editing and formatting tools within a document. I'm going to be showing you this a little bit in PowerPoint and a little bit in Microsoft Word, um, only because they're fairly similar, and, and it, the nice thing is that it will transfer across software for us. So what I've got is I've got a Word document here. I pulled up the first 12 recommended amendments to the U.S. Constitution. I like using historical documents for this sort of thing because then I can just pull it up, something's pre-typed, and you'll be working on your final project uh, using a historical document, so I'm not going to make you retype that. We're going to be practicing a lot of the formatting and some things like that. So throughout these videos, you'll see me doing that. The first thing we need to cover is formatting and editing some text options, and we're going to be looking at some different font sizes and font styles uh, in our document. There's a couple of ways to do this. If I just highlight this, I'm going to highlight this paragraph here, uh, the obviously the easiest one is here in the home tab if you look in the font group that's the we're going to use the standard uh, labeling that Microsoft likes to use so we've got tabs we've got groups here is our font group and I can very easily pull down different fonts and I can see what it's going to look like you're familiar with that I can also change the sizes right this is in here um, another way to do this the second way, I will right click, and when I right click, it's going to bring up this contextual menu. There's some other things I can do down here, but right now we're just interested in the font, so I can change the font up here. I can change the size. Uh, I could also click these arrows up and down and change the sizes that way. So uh, very easy to do within the document of those two different ways. Next up, we have applying uh, some advanced options like superscript, subscript and capitalization so let's say we want to put a notation into here and I'm going to put the number two this is going to be my second reference you can see that doesn't do me much good because it looks like it's just part of the text here but I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to go to my font group this is the dialog box anytime you see one of these little pull down arrows this tells you there's more available in the function for that group so I'm going to pull down my font group and you can see it gives me some different options. So I can do a strike through, double strike through. I can superscript. Now superscript is going to place that number two above everything else around it. It makes it a little bit smaller. When I click on OK, you can see it's up there a little bit. Maybe I don't want it to be superscript. Pull back up my font group again. And I'm going to make it a subscript. It's going to be lower than the rest of the, the text right there. And you can see that it's kind of jutting down there below the line. Uh, capitalization. To capitalize, what I've done, I've selected this sentence here, and I'm going to go into my font group again, and here I have some different options. You can see small caps. If I wanted to make this a font where it looks like it's all capitalized, I can do that. I'll pull back open my font group, turn that off. Maybe instead of small capitalization, I'm going to be using all caps. If I want to look like I'm shouting, do control Z here let's undo that undo that again I like keyboard shortcuts because those are nice I'll try to tell you when I'm using those so you can maybe pick those up they're really handy if you use your left hand to hold down that control key with your pinky and then some of the other shortcut keys once you start using them they will actually save you quite a bit of time I, I didn't think so at first but I actually really enjoy using them now because they save me a lot of time Microsoft Office also has some pre-built styles for you. So I'm going to select this right here for Article the First. And if I come into my Styles group, you can see I have some different options. So I can do no spacing after it. I can change it so that it looks like it's a heading. Uh, there's a second type of heading, a third type of heading. These are going to come in handy later because if we use these predefined headings, when we create our table of contents, it'll automatically pick those up for us. So I'm going to change this article the first to heading one, come down here and grab article the second, change it to heading one also. So it makes it consistent throughout my document, but these are already built in for you. So you can just look at some of these different styles. If you use your pull down menu here, we have some different ones. We can create our own style if we'd like to. Uh, you can clear some of the forwarding, formatting there, and you can also apply some of those. So let's let's go back. This is still selected. Pull down my menu here, clear the formatting, and it got rid of that formatting for me. I'm just going to Control Z to undo that because I want to keep those 
for where we're heading in the next little bit here. Okay, we're going to uh, be inserting some hyperlinks here. Now a hyperlink, you're most familiar with them on the internet. Uh, they are anything you can click on that takes you someplace else. And so within your document, you can create three different types we're going to look at here. Uh, we're going to make a link to a web page. We're going to make a link to an email. And we're going to make a link within the document. So I'm going to first off look at this Article the Third. Now, we recognize this Article the Third as our current First Amendment. So maybe we want to look and see how that has been interpreted over the years. So I'm highlighting this and I'm going to turn it into a hyperlink by going to my insert tab on the insert tab I'm going to insert a link so I have nothing that I've done recently so I'm going to insert a link and I'm going to make it go to an existing file or a web page so in this dialog box now I can I have some other things I've looked at what I'm going to do I'm going to pull up a page here that I found with some interpretations of the First Amendment and I've highlighted here the uh, the address so I'm going to copy it come back to my Word document and I'm just going to control V to paste that in there when I click OK what I have is I have a hyperlink and we recognize this it has the blue text on it also has the underline so now when I click on this I can do a control click it's gonna follow me through it's gonna open up a browser you can see what that's doing right there we'll just stop this okay next up we're gonna be creating a link to an email so at the bottom of the document, we have the folks who have signed it here. Uh, John Adams was the current vice president of the United States. And so we have a link here for his email. I'm going to highlight where it says email and turn this into a hyperlink. Staying with my insert tab, go over to link, and I'm going to insert a link. This time I'm in the dialog box going to click on an email address. So his email address would be vice president of the United States at congress.gov. So I can click on OK. When this is done, I now have a hyperlink. I can control link, or con yeah, control click to follow the link. And you can see that it's telling me it's going to be emailing the Vice President of the United States at congress.gov. Finally, I'm going to be creating a uh, hyperlink within the document. So I've added this return to top. I'm going to highlight this text again, staying with my insert tab, I'm going to insert another link. This time in the link, I'm going to make it go to a place in this document. Now this has some pre-selected places for me. I have my headings, my bookmarks, top of the document. I'm just going to click top of the document. And now when I click on it, you can see it's going to control click, take us to the top of the document. So if I control click, let's just test that real quick. There we go. So that's inserting hyperlinks. And the very last thing we're going to do, we're going to be clearing all of the formatting in a document. Sometimes you pull a document over from the internet or from something else you've previously worked on, and you want to get rid of all of the formatting that's been done. I can very easily do this. I'm going to use a control A. That's another keyboard shortcut shortcut. That is for all. And I can just come up here to my font group in the home tab, click on clear all formatting, and there we go. We are there. If I don't like what I've done, remember I can control Z and that will just undo everything that we have done. And the last thing I'll say about the uh, styles up here, you can use these styles whether you're in the middle of text, you can put them in a table. Uh, so they go in different places if you want them. If you put them in a list, you can use those same sorts of predefined styles wherever you are in your document. So the next thing we're supposed to do in this standard is to apply some spacing before and after a paragraph. So let's just highlight all of our paragraphs. These four I'm going to work with and I'm going to go up to my paragraph group. Now I have a couple of different options. I'm just going to pull open this dialog box. It gives me a lot more choices and I can see that I have spacing before and after each paragraph. Now sometimes that makes it look nicer because it, it clumps all the paragraphs together. Uh, maybe you don't want that so we're going to make the spacing after it at zero. When I click OK, you can see that's tightened that back up a little bit. Control Z to undo my work. Uh, or maybe I want to put some spacing before each paragraph. So I've got a little bit of extra room in there, and it makes each of those paragraphs kind of stand out as their own little bit of text. Okay, next up, let's align our text. So I'm just going to do a Control-A to select everything in the document. 
that lets you see a little bit easier the way our text alignment works. If you see on this right side here, it looks kind of ragged. So I'm using my paragraph group and I can use a couple of different things. I can align left and I can either use a shortcut. When I mouse over it, you can see that it gives me what the shortcut is. So this is currently aligned left. But if I come over here, I could align right. It's going to make just that right edge clean. Or I just use a full justify. When I do this, you can see that I now have a nice clean edge both on the left and the right. It also didn't spread it out to where I have this line all broken up. I like that it didn't create this really horrible spacing in here for our, um, for our uh, document. Next up, we're going to look at some of the indenting options we have for paragraphs. So I've selected this particular paragraph, and I'm going to go into my paragraph group again. I'll open the dialog box. Now, I can indent this paragraph and make it stand out. So I'm going to do a half-inch indentation on each side, and when I click OK, what you'll see is that I've got a half-inch of space on both the left and the right-hand side of this paragraph. I can also do a couple of special types of indents. Again, going back to my paragraph group, uh, I have in the indentation the special. I can indent just the first line. So when I click OK, you can kind of see what it looks like here, but I'll click it. So just that first line is indented there. Let me do a Control z to undo that, go back to my paragraph group. Or the other option is I could just make this a hanging indent. What that's going to do is the first line is going to be standard at the left, but then the rest of them are going to be indented. So you can kind of see what that looks like. Our final tasks for this standard are to uh, edit and customize some text bullets. Uh, so it's really simple to add bulleting. We're going to highlight the text we want, and then we're up in the paragraph group. And I'm just going to pull down the menu here, and I can add bullets. Fairly easy to do. We also need to be able to edit bullets. And so I'm going to pull this down again. And I can actually change my levels. I can define a new bullet. And you can see I've already done that here with the bullet from uh, the Mario Brothers series. So I'm going to define a new bullet. And I could do that with a symbol. So if I go to symbols, I have all the different symbols that I have available to me through my fonts. And there is a ton of those there. I could also do a picture, which is what I did. Now Microsoft is going to try to get me to use Bing, and I apologize. So let's do a Mario bullet here. When I do my search, it's going to go out and it's going to think. Now it's going to try to default to Creative Commons so that I don't end up using uh, something that is copyright. So I'm just going to grab this one right here, insert it, and now I have a real actual bullet. When I click on this, you can see I've got these. So you can use a lot of different things for this. Uh, I've had students use actually a teacher's face for the bullet points in their documents. And so uh, you, you can get creative with this just a little bit. The last thing I want to do is be able to do some numbering. So let's re-highlight this. And again, it's just right here next to number. We're going to create a numbered list and we have some options here. You can see the different way they look. And it doesn't really make sense since it's already called Article the First, Article the Second, Article, Article the Third, but we can just add these in and it just shows you how to do it. Finally, we can create a list and we can actually define our own. So let's define a new multi-level list. So for level one, you can see we can click. We're going to put the numbering here for number one. For the second level in, it's this particular bullet. We could change it to whatever we want it to be. Um, I'm not going to mess with this right now. Just let you play with that. So there's our third list. And so we're not seeing those because we're only in one level. But if I grab the second and third bullet point here, I can come up to my paragraph group and I can either increase or decrease the indent. So if I increase the indent, it's going to go to my second bullet here. Let's increase my indent one more time for the third one. And if it turns out I don't like the way it looks, again, I can either control Z or I can come back and I can decrease my indent. And you can see that doesn't uh, really matter. So I've thrown off our numbering here a little bit, but that's okay. Let's grab article the second, decrease the indenting, and we're back to our numbering where we want it to be. 
So we've made it through all of standard one. Uh, coming up, we've got standard two where we're going to uh, do some navigating through the software.